I'm Sean Ray with Sean Ray Realty, and this is your Dallas Real Estate News Update. Story number one, Dallas buyers are still paying over listing price for their home purchases. This story comes to us from Steve Brown for the Dallas Morning News, and he talks about how even though we're entering into a buyer's market, which basically means that the appreciation rate of the homes in the area are going less than historical averages. Historical averages are three to six, depending on three to six percent, depending on what part of Dallas you're talking about. But now we're getting in that two percent range, and so that's pretty interesting. So as we shift into the buyer's market, it should be lowering the price of homes and also making the home sales that are being completely sold and purchased under list price typically and historically. But we're seeing actually people going above that. So what that basically means if you have a house that's listed for 250,000 that's being sold for 260, 270,000. Now this doesn't make a whole lot of scientific sense unless you actually figure out what the reasoning behind that is. Most of the reasoning behind that stems from the fact that most of the homes that are currently on the MLS that are vacant and they have like 30, 60, 100 days on the market, they're normally in that $350,000, $400,000 range and up. And so most of the new home buyers that come to the market are trying to do anything around that two fifty dollars to $200,000 price point because this is their first home purchase. And so because of that demand that gets rushed into these tiny little price ranges for affordable homes, then you see that demand push up the amounts of prices that people end up willing to pay for these homes. Story number two, new home starts drop in Dallas compared to last year. This story comes to us from Bill Hethcock from Dallas Business Journals. And he talks about how last year at this time, there was 40% more new home starts. What basically that means is that there's just an oversupply in the market right now of these new homes that so many people last year and the year before were building all this new residential home, all these new residential homes for the oversupply that was supposed to be coming into Dallas. It's true, there was oversupply, but not in that price range. Due to the fact that it costs so much to do homes in here in Dallas, they couldn't afford to build massive amount of homes uh, supply in that 200 to $300,000 price point. So they had to do the $400,000, $500,000 and up price point just to make a profit. Problem is there's not a whole lot of people that were looking in that price point. So now there's just a huge vacancy. So there's a 40% drop. Whoa, that's crazy to me. But what's also interesting at the same time, the reason why I brought this up is that there is an 8% increase in commercial, multifamily, apartments, all that kind of stuff like that here in Dallas. And it puts us at the sixth place of the most new starts in commercial industry in the nation. So pretty cool how that works out. Even though there's a oversupply on the residential side and the commercial side, it's still booming and rocking. Story number three, the Dallas apartment market is booming right now. The story comes to us from Steve Brown with the Dallas Morning News, and he talks about how there's still 42,000 units that are supposed to hit the market before the end of 2019. 42,000 new apartments that are just gonna be sitting on the market. Now, that might seem crazy to you, but in the third quarter alone, there was over 10,000 net apartment leases, and that was way more than there was, I think 15% more than there was last year. And so there's still more and more apartments being leased at a faster pace than historically averaged. On top of that, there is 2% increase per year for these net lease or for these leases. And so it's an asset that keeps growing and getting better and better for the people that are building the actual apartment complexes. And then there's a 95.5% occupancy rate, which is like a 0.5% vacancy is insane. Like who wouldn't want to build an apartment complex right now? I personally think there's going to be a with like a potential turn down of the of the economy, and then with all this oversupply, I think there might just need to be a little bit of a push for like one month or two month freeze to get these people in. But what do I know? I mean, we'll see. I keep on being blown away by these numbers. Story number four: Texas politician potentially blocks a teardown of I-35 because his son might be involved with some kind of shady dealings. I'll explain. And so this story comes to us from Robert Montoya from Texas Scorecard. And what he's talking about is that a couple years ago, 
the Dallas City Council said, okay, cool, we approve the proposition to tear down I-35 when it connects over into that 75 area over between, that separates Deep Ellum from like uh, the farmer's market and downtown and uptown, all kinds of stuff like that. And so this idea would be to open up that area, therefore there's a whole lot more walkability and it wouldn't create that natural barrier that has been a long time broken that whole area from any kind of real growth until recently, Deep Ellum's booming recently. So all's fair, all's good. But the politicians behind it just recently started not allowing any kind of progress to happen on this and then not, and there was not a whole lot of evidence why until recently it was found that his son was proposing for there to be all sorts of projects being done instead of tearing it down, turning it into public work stuff or turning it into a possible uh, soccer field. And so that way his son would benefit from this project. And that is not good. That's pretty shady. And I would say, dare I say illegal? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. But either way, it's unethical. And so they're researching and they're looking into this right now and a whole bunch of deep Ellen people and downtown revitalization, revitalization committees are fighting against this, this, uh, this politician for to do the right thing. And as of right now, it's kind of a stalemate. But I mean, who would want a soccer field under that bridge anyways? If you guys don't know which bridge I'm talking about, it used to be the old homeless, under, like there's a whole bunch of homeless people in all the tents and they converted it into a dog park. And now they're talking about doing a soccer field. Like who wants their kids running around over that area with all the, with all the, the cars and the smog and the fumes? That's, that's just silly. Story number five. Dallas is the second best city to live in if you're in tech. The story comes to us from John Egan from Dallas Culture Map. And I'm pretty surprised. I didn't think this was gonna be the case, but it is ranked out of 200 cities that they compared what the best cities were to live in for tech. Dallas is ranked number two. And the reason why is that most people that start a job in tech in Dallas, on average, start at like $84,000 a year. But the average price per home in the areas around where the tech jobs are is around 350 or so, $350,000 or so. And so they might not be making the most amount of money, like say for instance, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, they're making way higher for their income per year on average, but the cost of living is way higher. And so your $84,000 here, 84, 86, whatever, uh, goes a lot further here. And so while we're not maybe as cool as certain parts of California, you definitely can enjoy your money way better here in Texas. Plus, and you have to pay that whole state income tax thing. What is that about? Man. Thank you guys so much for watching the Dallas Real Estate News Update this week. If you like this kind of content, I'm gonna be releasing something like this every single week to keep you updated on all the cool things happening in Dallas when it's somewhat real estate related. If I miss a story that you guys really liked this week but I didn't get to, then please yell at me in the comment below and I will read all your comments, respond to them, and then I'll take care of that story next week or if you have any suggestions, I'm open to hearing them. Also, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell as well, because that will let you know, let, let YouTube know that you actually like this stuff. All right, thanks again, guys. There are some videos here that are recommendations from uh, Playlist and also last week's Dallas Real Estate News Update. If you guys want the stories in their entirety, then the links are gonna be in the bios. Support the original authors. They do really hard jobs. They spend a lot of time getting this kind of information. All I do is just regurgitate it back to you and I give you like cliff note versions. Okay, guys, see you next week. Hit the little notification bell.